is JB with Moss Epoxies. We're here in Meredith, New Hampshire, looking at this beautiful 1953 42-foot Matthews. I'm here with Mark Bain from Charleston, South Carolina. Mark's claim to fame recently, most recently, is he built the 140-foot schooner Spirit of South Carolina. Um, but now we've got Mark up here in New Hampshire working on this beautiful Matthews. We're splining the seams and getting her ready for cruises on Lake Winnipesaukee. Go to the smile of the great spirit .com when you want to go for a cruise on this beautiful boat that's going to be finished soon this summer 2009 and um, and we're going to talk about how we're going to get it ready to go. When Noah first got this boat uh, it had paint on it of course but being in 1953 Matthews had never been redone and uh, we brought Mark up here to work on the boat and get it ready to go. And Mark, let's talk a little bit about how, what we're doing here and wh how we're getting it ready to run. When the boat first came in here, she was covered with paint and Noah, the owner of this in New Hampshire Interiors, he bought the boat with the idea of getting people out for cruises. And um, he, he looked at the boat and he said, man, this is gonna be perfect for doing this. And he asked me to look at it and I saw the boat and said, hey, you know what, this needs to be reinforced to get ready to take people out on cruises. Now this is a, it's a mahogany. Mahogany planking. And Bob and Noah had stripped all the paint off the boat. We took all the rub rails off, tow rails off. And the seams were filled with uh, cotton, caulking, and then seam putty. So, and it was old and dried and cracked out. So we came along with a with a reefing tool and reefed out the loose putty. Now, what what does a reefing tool look like? A reefing tool basically is a, like a bent screwdriver. Um, Bob's gonna get us one right now. Okay. And uh, and we could make them different shapes for different size seams, and we'd reef all the loose stuff out by hand, and then we just set the skill saw for a particular depth, and freehand ran the skill saw down all the seams in the boat, which pulled out a lot of the stuff, and left left us a nice clean seam for the spline and the epoxy. Okay, so in this process, we're gonna be using epoxy, moss epoxies for this. And we're gonna use low viscosity resin and a medium hardener. It's rather cool here this time of year. We're here in March and it's uh, temperatures are ranging between 30 and 55 degrees. This is a warm March for us. Normally it's, it stays in the 30s all the time. So we're gonna use a medium hardener and we're gonna use this low viscosity resin. That means this resin has a viscosity of about 750 centipoys mixed. Now, water is zero and uh, cold honey is probably 10,000. So that mixed viscosity is thin enough in these temperatures that it's gonna flow into the wood fibers of the glass or into the glass and into the wood fiber behind it and saturate everything completely. So we need a thinner resin system to do that with. All right, so we talked about using a 1708 biaxial fabric. This is 1708 biaxial fabric. It is a fiberglass fiber where there's one layer of glass fibers laid on top of another layer of fiberglass. And you can see here, actually best here, where we have the top layers coming in this direction, 45 degrees, and then a minus 45 degrees on the one behind it, and this being your, our zero axis. So we have glass fibers going in two directions in a crisscross. Now we want that because it adds, it adds stiffness to the boat. So we're gonna have this crisscross glass, it's called biaxial fabric. 17 ounces means that it's 17 ounces per square yard of this glass. Okay, on the back side of this is a matte material. It's called, it's a matte chaotic orientation fiber and this helps to adhere the glass to the hull. So on one side you've got the 17 ounce fiber here and on the other side of it you've got this chop strand mat. So it's, it's like having two layers of glass in one. Hey, so now we're going to go ahead and replace this plank on the boat. And can you walk us through how that's going to go, Mark? Yes. Uh, well, last night, Bob went ahead and cut and fit a couple more planks. These are the last two planks on the starboard side. So you can see our sister frames next to our old frames. So we're going to come in now, epoxy up all the surfaces, screw our plank in, and then we're going to putty up the seams and drive our epoxy splines in place and then go on to the next one. 
So what's happening here now is uh, Bob is is um, go ahead and, and he's saturating some of the epoxy onto this this pine spline so that when we do put the the plank on, they'll be ready to go. We'll be able to put them right on. And it's cool enough here now that um, we don't have to worry about this stuff setting up too fast because it's about 45 degrees. So we got plenty of time to work with this. Now while he's doing that, Noah over here, we got Noah blending filler into the mixed epoxy to thicken it up so that we can put the thickened resin system like a putty style material into the um, into the, the seams and, and where there's space behind the planks so that it, it, it fills and, and will um, when we put the screws in it'll pull up tight to it and it'll make a nice putty almost well, not like a pudding, not quite like a peanut butter, like a like a smooth pudding. So there's nothing really scientific about this technique that you're doing here, huh? Well, just try to get plenty on there and keep most of it off the ground. And the um, what looks like chunky peanut butter there is uh, some <laughs> some old wood flour that they mixed into it, and it's fine. It'll glue up just fine. So Mark, uh, this plank that we're putting back in place, this mahogany, is, um, is it any special kind of mahogany? It's the really expensive one. It's the really expensive one? Well, you know, Philippine mahogany or Honduran mahogany, is there... Um, this is uh, African mahogany, actually. And it's not that expensive compared to Honduran mahogany. One of the things we wanted to talk about here is using epoxies in this environment. Um, why we use epoxies are, one, that it's an adhesive and it's stronger than any other glue that you could use in here. Um, the other thing is we don't use what are called polyester resins because one, they aren't adhesives and two, they have a lot of VOCs. There's a lot of odor to them. With epoxies, there's no VOCs. There's no Class A carcinogens with moss epoxies. And there's no byproducts. When this epoxy sets up, unlike other epoxies, it won't have a waxy film known as amine blush. We remove the amine blush from the epoxy system so that when it cures, there's no downstream waste. We don't have to wash this. If we had used a competitor's brand of epoxy on this, when we go to coat this whole thing in fiberglass, in between each coat, we would have to come back with water and wash it off and then sand it and then recoat it. With moss epoxies, we don't have that amine blush. So not only are we making it safer for people to work with, it reduces contact dermatitis issues, or would people get like a poison ivy effect from epoxies, that gets reduced, as well as we don't have that extra step of having to wash and sand in between coats. If we put a coat on and come back four hours from now and touch it with a, a cotton ball or a, you know, a, a paper towel or rag and it tears the hair off of it, we can go ahead and recoat it without touching it. Mm -hmm. 